Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make pumpkin seed brittle and this is what it looks like. This has lots of pumpkin seeds encased in this really sweet and crunchy brittle. It's just so good. So the first thing what we're going to do is just you will need a large baking sheet and then I'm going to lightly butter it. I just melted a little bit of butter and then I'm using a pastry brush. You could also just lightly spray your pan with one of those non-stick sprays or you could even brush your pan with a flavorless oil. And that way, the reason we were buttering it is so that when we put our uh, brittle, our hot brittle on there, it won't stick to our pan. And then what we're going to do is to uh, toast our pumpkin seeds. So you will need one and a third cups, which is 200 grams of raw pumpkin seeds. And I put them on a baking sheet and then I'm j I just popped it into a 350 degree Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius oven for maybe four or five minutes, just until they get a little bit of color and you can start to smell them. You could, if you don't want to do it in the oven, you could just put your pumpkin seeds in a large skillet and then do it that way, either way. And then whenever you make candy, what you want to do is have all your ingredients and all your equipment out because you don't want to be running around because we're taking our sugar syrup to a certain temperature. You got to make sure you take it off the heat. So have everything out. So what you want to have is one tablespoon, which is 13 grams of butter, put that out, and one teaspoon, four grams of pure vanilla extract. We are, I like to add a little vanilla at the end. I think it adds, it adds flavor to our brittle. You, have, you don't really, if you would prefer not to have a vanilla flavor, you could leave that out, or you could even add, some people like to add some ground cinnamon to their pumpkin seed brittle. You could do that instead. And then also you will need a half a teaspoon, which is two grams of baking soda. So just put that aside. And then you will need a heavy duty uh, saucepan. It's better to have that heavy bottom so that we don't want our sugar syrup to burn because then it doesn't taste very good. So have a heavy bottom uh, saucepan with a lid. And then of course, um, really handy to have a candy thermometer. You could use the mercury type of candy thermometer. And I like the ones that have these clips on the back because then it just clips onto your um, saucepan, makes it simple. Or I've started to use the um, digital type of uh, candy thermometer. That's nice too because you just set the temperature and then you have this probe that you uh, again just clips onto the side of your saucepan. So either one, whatever you'd like to use. And then I like to have some oven mitts just because the saucepan gets a little hot. So to make our um, sugar syrup, you will need one cup, which is 200 grams of granulated white sugar. Just put that in there. And then you will need just a pinch of salt for flavor, about an eighth of a teaspoon. And then you will need a half a cup, which is 100, uh, 120 milliliters. Or if you want to go by weight, 115 grams of water, just you know, regular tap water. And then we're going to add some light corn syrup, uh, a half a cup, which is 120 milliliters, or if you want to go by weight, 155 grams. The light corn, corn syrup, it helps, um, one, it, it helps the grain, to get a nice grain on in our brittle, and it helps to prevent the sugar crystallization, which means a grainy brittle, which we don't want. So, Adding corn syrup really helps prevent that. So what we're going to do now is just put, you know, medium, medium high heat. And what we want to do is bring this to a boil and to dissolve our sugar. So you either, you know, a wooden spoon's nice. I'm using one of those, these silicone uh, spatulas that can go up to a high heat, but normally, a, you know, a wooden spoon is absolutely fine. And we want to make sure all that sugar dissolves. So stir constantly until it comes up to a boil. Okay, so we're now boiling. So what I like to do to wash down the sides of my saucepan make, to make sure if there's any sugar there, it kind of washes down. I'm just going to put the lid of my saucepan on there for about a minute. 
The other choice is to take a pastry brush with some water and then you could just um, wipe it down, brush it down that way. But I, I find it easier just to put the lid on and let it go. Okay, so that's about a minute. There we have. Sides are all washed down. So now what we're going to do is let that boil away, a nice boil. You know, you may have to adjust your temperature until we come up to 280 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 140 degrees Celsius. And then at that point, I'm going to add my uh, pumpkin seeds. And I put them in a bowl just so it's easier to dump it into the pot. So if you, whatever type of uh, candy thermometer you have, just clamp it onto the sides and... If you have a digital, set it to 300, and then watch. We're going up to um, 280. And what I like to do, just so it doesn't burn, I like to just swirl my pot every once in a while to mix up that sugar syrup so you don't get any crystallization of the sugar. Okay, so we're at about 280 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 140 degrees Celsius, so somewhere around there. I'm going to add my pumpkin seeds, and now we're going to continue. We're going to have to stir a lot now to make sure all our pumpkin seeds are covered with the syrup, and we're going to take this up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 149 degrees Celsius, and just make sure you stir to get all your pumpkin seeds coated with that delicious syrup. Now I find it took, you know, somewhere around 10 minutes to bring it up to that 280, which is the soft crack stage. And now we're going to take it up to the hard crack stage, 300 degrees Fahrenheit, 149 Celsius. So just watch your thermometer and keep stirring. Adjust your heat if you need to. I don't want anything to burn here. So, okay, so we're almost there. Almost. Okay, 300. So take it off the heat. Careful, it's hot. You don't want to burn yourself. And then what we're going to add immediately is our butter, our one tablespoon of butter, and that's for flavor and also our vanilla. Now this will puff up, so be careful. And that's, the, as I said, the vanilla's for flavor. And then our baking soda. And baking soda, what it does is it helps with browning. And the other thing it does is it makes a very nice, light and crunchy brittle, which is what we want. So that's why we add baking soda, if you're kind of wondering, why do we do that? And now, I'm going to pour this as thin as possible onto our baking sheet. Be very careful. You don't want to burn yourself here, which I have done. If you do burn yourself, just put your hand under cold water, ice cold water. Helps. Okay. Looks good. And then, if you want a thin brittle, depending, I mean, if you want it thick, you could just leave it like this. If you want it thin, then what I do is take two forks, and then you can just kind of pull it. As you can see, it kind of moves. So let's sit for just a sec. And then you can pull it out to make it thinner. The other, some people like to use gloved hands and then just pull it. But I just use the forks. I mean, if you like it thick, then you can just leave it. So that's what you do. And then I like to put my brittle on a wire rack because we do have to let it cool for a bit. So if you want, you can just pull it out. Stretch it. Oh. Like so, as you can see, why don't you just keep working 
as it's setting there, you can work it. And then we're going to let this cool, and when we come back, we will try it. Okay, so now our uh, pumpkin seed brittle is cooled off. One thing, uh, if you, once you've made your brittle, if you notice, my pot is really dirty, and that sugar syrup is really um, stuck to my saucepan. So what I do is fill it with some water and put it back on the heat, bring it up to just almost a boil, and then let it sit, and then that hot water will dissolve all your uh, sugar syrup, make it really easy to clean your pot. So once your, um, your brittle has cooled off, then I just take like a spatula, and then you can just kind of use that to get under there because we did, we did butter our pan. So just like, as you can see, it just comes up in one big sheet. And I just kind of, with my fingers and you know, break it into as big or as little pieces as you want. If you notice my, the brittle, the ratio of pumpkin seeds to brittle, I have a lot of pumpkin seeds and it's just kind of encased in just enough syrup so everything sticks together. If you prefer a brittle that has more of the uh, sugar syrup, the brittle part to this pumpkin seeds, you could use less pumpkin seeds, whatever you like. So I'm gonna try a piece. Oh, really? I mean, the brittle is so, it's crunchy, it just snaps and just dissolves in your mouth. And then, of course, the pumpkin seeds are really nice. I mean, you can eat this, just put, you could uh, give it as gifts and just put it in a nice bag, and, and um, everyone would really like that. You could also just um, use like pieces and decorate a cake if you're making um, like a, the uh, pumpkin cake, something like that, you could use that brittle for that. You could grind up in your food processor the brittle and, and sprinkle it over ice cream, very nice. Or even add it to pastry cream or whipped cream. I mean, it's really a great candy. And now you can, you wanna make sure when you store this, Put it in an airtight container because you want to get all that air out because we don't want it to um, start breaking down. Uh, because I live in a humid climate, I, t I store it in the fridge. I find it's the best way. But if you don't, you can store it at room temperature. And I find it lasts a couple of weeks, although typically we eat it before. <laughs> so it probably won't last that long. So enjoy. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Thanks. Thank you.